All right, I think I've uh, given everybody about enough time for finish up their lunches and meals. I, it seems like people have trickled in everywhere. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Ryan Aslett. I'm the infrastructure QA engineer with the Drupal Association and uh, presenting today on what our strategic roadmap is for 2015 and what we're going to be doing with Drupal.org and all of its subsites. So, um, first of all, a little bit of background on where we're coming from in 2014. Drupal.org has historically been maintained by mostly volunteers, and as a consequence of that, um, the community has driven most of the initiatives of how Drupal.org should work and how and what sort of functions and features Drupal.org has. And it's reached the point where we need to do more with Drupal.org and can't necessarily rely on solely the community to get these things accomplished. And so the Drupal Association staffed up our tech team, so there's now 11 of us working on Drupal.org and all of its subsites. So we started with two full-time staff members. That was Neil Drum and Tatiana, if you're familiar with them. And they kept things going for a long time, but it was hard for them to develop new initiatives or take on new things that would improve the way we work with Drupal and the, our access to things, and et cetera. So here's a, a little growth chart that shows where we've been. So Neil and Tatiana are there have been holding down the fort for the last three years. And then we have uh, Brendan came on staff. He's our technical coordinator in internally, gets us all our laptops and keeps everything running inside. And then we hired Rudy, Basic, and Liz. Liz helps manage the community. Basic is one of our infrastructure gurus. He uh, kind of keeps all the servers running, keeps everything everything going on the back end. He, um, and then in March, we hired Josh, who is uh, our CTO. And he's kind of set the direction and the pace for what we're going to be working on and how we're doing things. Followed by Oliver Davies, who is a developer. So he's doing a lot of work on DrupalCon sites and on um, Drupal.org itself, uh, very, of the various features that we've been working on. Archie came on staff as another member of the infrastructure team, so he's helping Rudy. And then myself, I joined as well, and I'm also on the infrastructure team. So we um, try and keep all the servers running, keep all the backups going, make sure that everything is accessible and everything is um, always available. That's how we want. We don't want Drupal.org to be down. So um, that's one of our goals. And then recently, in September, we hired Jacob and Emily, who they've been working on the con sites. They helped build DrupalCon Latin America. They um, also put together a new site uh, events.drupal.org, which will be housing all of our con sites in the future. And then finally, we hired Tim, who is a project manager, and he's helping us keep everything in line and figure out what we're doing next and keeps us on track. So since we added an engineering team, uh, lots of things have been happening at a kind of a much more rapid pace than they have in the past. I don't know if you've noticed in your interactions with Drupal.org, if you've seen some of the things that have happened, but um, we wanted to change Drupal to run semantic versioning. So we wanted 8.0.0 .0 .0 and to break the really huge release cycle. And we had to do a lot of things on the infrastructure side as far as Git and all the database backend to support that. So we've added that. Uh, we removed some Drupal 8 beta release blockers, things that were stopping the core committers from being able to proceed with Drupal 8. We added... Um, we took over the test bots. Uh, the test bots were managed by community, and oftentimes it would break, and there were some issues with them. So now we manage them, and we're kind of on the hook for all the test bots. A uh, new thing that's happened recently is we've imported a feature from Dreaditor, which is how to give commit credit to users as your as users add patches to things. We've now got this feature that shows who participated in the issue, whether they put comments or patches in. That's, that's been deployed as well. Um, our old user profiles were still an artifact of Drupal 6 where they were kind of stored as a uh, profile field and we've converted those all to entities and fields. 
we recently deployed the blue cheese as a responsive theme. So I don't know if you've noticed and looked at Drupal.org on a web phone or a tablet, but it should be a lot easier to navigate on various devices. We've improved the new user experience, which is as new people come into Drupal.org, there was a lot of um, kind of outdated best practices as far as like logging in and then going to your email to get a validation and then coming back. And oftentimes we would lose people through that process of trying to accomplish what, what they wanted to do. So now we have a much clearer workflow between Drupal.org and all the subsites. So if you register at a conference site or if you register at groups, it'll take you back to Drupal.org and we have kind of a more unified uh, user process. And uh, as I mentioned before, we've uh, launched events.drupal.org, so all of our DrupalCons now, instead of being individual Drupal sites, can all run as subsites of one large site, and which will keep code maintenance down and give us a lot of options that way. Um, and then finally, we launched Drupal Jobs. So Drupal Jobs is the place where you can find talent if you need people. We have, there's hundreds of people in the database that are looking for work, and we've also got hundreds of jobs listed of people who are looking to uh, find, find talent. So that's, uh, and that supports the Drupal Association as well. Other things, uh, we added a CDN. Everything used to come directly to Drupal.org servers, and now we have the um, Edgecast is our CDN. So that's, that's offloaded a lot of work from our internal servers, particularly updates. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but when you have your, when you turn on updates and it tells you that, oh, your site is out of date or you need to upgrade this module or there's some security features that have come out since then, every Drupal site in the world that has that turned on is hitting Drupal.org every five minutes or every hour asking us for updates. So it's, it's a really heavy amount of traffic that we get for that, and the CDNs helped a lot with that. There's a, a new REST API that allows you to access um, issue queues and nodes and users and find data that comes back as JSON. And there's details on Drupal.org on how to leverage that. Some people have already started to build tools like Kanban boards and project management tools to kind of, rather than scrape the data off of Drupal.org, they can actually find the data they're looking for. We implemented a change notification policy because sometimes things would change and people would not know that they were, those changes were coming or really wanted to know when they, when they were coming from. Um, internally, we've introduced Scrum project management and we have a much better product planning and life cycle. So now that we have a team, we have a good way of organizing that team. And so we have organized what we're gonna be working on in the future. We have new database servers. The database server that ran Drupal.org was seven years old and didn't quite have enough horsepower to run everything that we wanted to now. And our new database server is a machine. It is awesome. And the page load time should be a lot, lots faster now that we have that in place. So, and all of our metrics have shown that we dropped 300 milliseconds off of every request. So, happy about that. Um, and we are performing a lot more support. So, there's a lot less. Uh, reliance on community getting around to answering questions about the infrastructure. And now we can, if someone has a problem pushing to Git, we can immediately respond and be like, oh, I'm sorry, here, let us help you fix that. So those are just some of the wins that we've had since we've introduced our engineering team. So just to give you an idea of the scale of all the things that we're responsible for, we move about 20 terabytes of data a month. Like, just that much volume in and out. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty huge. In fact, this slide is really dense, but it kind of gives you an idea. Every one of those blue squares is, is a server, is a site. QA.drupal.org updates, infrastructure, uh, all the code browsing, all the APIs, the association site, all the DrupalCon sites, the Drupal store, uh, the job site, the security site. I mean, the, there's this many sites in the Drupal ecosystem on Drupal.org, and these are all within our responsibility. And it's running on a lot of machines. We've got four web nodes, a couple of file servers, four database servers, uh, a couple of load balancers, solar search servers, and then an entire infrastructure of development stuff inside that allows us to 
stage and develop changes to Drupal.org. So it's, it's a lot of machinery and a lot of moving parts. The red stuff is all things that people would perceive as core to Drupal.org, but are actually community supported and community developed. So things like Drush and Simple Test Me and Dreditor, et cetera. Okay, so with all of the history of how long we've been around and all of the things that we want to accomplish and all the things that people have asked for for years, like, oh, why don't we have this or why don't we have that? It'd be great if Drupal don't ever did this. We kind of had to go through all of that and prioritize what we were going to do and say, well, something's got to come first. So how do we do that? Well, we started with user research. We decided to go to the community and during DrupalCon Amsterdam, or I'm sorry, DrupalCon Austin, we interviewed 30 different users of all different spectrums from developers to site builders to end customers to kind of find out what they needed to from Drupal.org and what were the features and functions and and kind of to figure out who our audience was, to figure out. And so we uh, came up with these user personas to kind of put people in categories that are using the site to give us an idea of who we're, so who we're currently serving and who we need to serve better. So we've got learners, well, we've got newcomers, people, they've heard about Drupal, they're just, they've run a Google search and land on Drupal.org, which is surprisingly large number of traffic comes from a search for just the word Drupal. <laughs> Um, learners are people who, you know, they know what Drupal is, they've started to install sites, um, but they're not customizing too much, they're just kind of getting their feet wet. Skilled, these are people who, they've got an understanding of Drupal, they're fluent in Drupal specific terminology, they know what a view is, they know what content types are. Um, they're often engaged in the community, but not totally, they're not necessarily going to camps yet, or, or Drupal cons. And our experts, these are the people who really understand Drupal. Um, they, they are the ones that are hanging out in IRC. They're the ones that are um, answering questions when people ask. They're, they've got a deep understanding of, of Drupal. And they actively contribute back. They're building modules. They're submitting patches. And then finally, we have masters. And these are the people that have been around the Drupal ecosystem since the beginning or have really dove themselves in really deep, and they're committing to core, they understand everything that's going on, they've been to all the cons, they're, they're, they're the Drupal rock stars, for, to put it in, you know, in, in that terminology. Um, so when we evaluated this, this uh, skills pyramid, what we found is that we were having, we were pretty much serving the masters pretty well. They knew their way around the way everything worked. The experts weren't having too hard of a time figuring things out. But the place where we needed to improve is getting people from newcomers to learners or learners to skilled or skilled to expert. We, it was really the bottom half of the pyramid that, you know, when you first started working with Drupal.org, it, it was probably easy to collide with uh, information that was outdated or you didn't know where to look for what you were looking for or it was just organized in such a way that made it harder for those people. So. We definitely need to increase the number of successful developers that use Drupal, and so that's where we decided to put some of our focus. So with that research in hand, then we wanted to turn it into a plan. So um, some of the goals that we wanted to accomplish with this was we wanted to make sure that we continue to fund Drupal.org and pay for all of this because it's you know the association has to has to get its funding from somewhere. Um, we need to make sure that everyone has support and has all the maintenance that they, and keep all the servers running. We want to drive everything from community initiatives because people have put in time and effort over the years and they're good at it and we need to leverage as much as we can out of that. And then finally the board and the working group priorities um, help us kind of set our direction. So the working groups, they were established in early 2013. They had, there's the content working group and the Drupal software tools working group and documentation working group and I'm sure some other working groups that I'm not sure of. They ran an ideation process which was like, well, what, what do we want to fix? What do we want to make better? How do we want to improve Drupal.org? And every year we kept coming up with the same themes and the same things kind of kept happening and we're like, well, these are the things we should work on. So we set out some objectives. What did we want it to be? We want it to be the home of the Drupal community, a central source of relevant info 
uh, where everyone comes to collaborate, and this is where all the talent is. We want we want Drupal.org to be the place where everybody goes for Drupal information. We're trying to keep it from being spread all over the web in different places and different spots so no one knows where to go. We want it to be centralized. We want to provide all the tools that everyone needs to advance within the Drupal ecosystem. We want to provide all the documentation and all the code and all the tutorials and videos and opportunities to advance. Um, and we want to encourage people to develop themselves and their Drupal proficiency and also build their own career. So we set up key performance indicators to say, well, okay, how do we how do we measure this? And you know, some of this stuff is like, well, some things we know, like page response time and test bot response time and uptime and how engaged are our users to let us know are we making things better. Uh, we keep up with the issue queues and make sure that our issue response time is you know minimal. If someone's having a problem with Git, we try and get back with them within 24 hours. Uh, we were improving our testing. We've got a, a BDD infrastructure for Drupal.org that makes sure that new deployments keep keep from breaking. Um, well, we keep keep bad things out of production with the tests. Um, I'm not sure what the development and deployment but, uh, bullet is for. <laughs> and um, I also want to maximize our hardware. We're running out of the op open source labs out of Oregon. And we run some stuff on Amazon Web Services, and we use the Edgecast CDN. So we want to we want to make sure that we're getting the most out of what we've got, and we've got a lot. So it's there's a lot of opportunities for um, keeping our performance going there. Sure. Uh, well, it's a combination of Edgecast, and now we're also looking at Fastly for um, FTP, because that was another piece of the infrastructure that we're looking to improve is um, when you download modules with Drush or when you download them off the website, it's using kind of an antiquated system that's only mirrored to three spots. And so, so based off of all of that input from you know what we want to improve and what the community's asked for and the kind of things that we're targeting, we've got seven key strategic initiatives that we're going to work on in 2015. So this is, these are the main things. So new user engagement. So with new users, we want to, Fix the account creation and login process. We're pretty far down this path and are almost finished with this, actually. So it should end up that we have one unified login across all Drupal subsites. And it, yeah, it, it's, it'll be really nice that we have that. And we won't have to worry so much about someone's logged in here but not there, and they don't have an account here and there. And that'll also facilitate things like if people want to sign up for a con and they want to buy a ticket for the Drupal con, but they don't have an account yet and they create the account and then they forget about it because they have to log in for, to their email. And we're just making that user workflow and user experience a lot better. We're introducing organization and user profile improvements. So the user profiles used to be uh, just kind of a list of a bunch of things. And we've organized them and made them look a lot better I don't know if you've seen them, but now there's like pictures of mentors on there than where it used to be links. And um, all in all, it really shows a lot more how much you participate in the Drupal community if, you're, um, if you've seen your profiles. But the introduction of organizations is a, is a new thing as well. And this kind of follows on from Dree's keynotes and, and direction, which is that we want to give organizations more credit. Traditionally, organizations have been... Um, Individuals have been the only people allowed to have accounts on Drupal.org, and that was so that organizations didn't take credit for the individual's contribution. But now we're going to have both, and people will be able to have credit for stuff that they do, but then also put that on the organization's page to say, this organization sponsored this module. This organization paid for me to work on this patch. And that way orgs get credit as well as users, and hopefully help sustain the ecosystem because not everybody can work on their, in their spare time on this sort of thing to contribute to the community. We're working on a content strategy for Drupal.org. Um, one of the things you may have noticed is that everything is node slash number in the URL, which doesn't give the user any indication of where they're at, whether they're on a forum or an issue queue, whether they're um, reading documentation. So. Even just the URL structure is something we're working on and figuring out, okay, well, do we need forum posts? Should we move this to some other type of content type? What type of content do we actually want to have? And so rather than take the, well, we've got the content that's evolved over the years, 
into what it is now, we want to kind of reassess that and, and come up with a, a actual, here's what would work best for the community to help the newcomers, to help the experts, and to help the skilled people grow their career. And along with that will come a redesign, including um, like a, a, a design strategy and so that we can have reusable modules of design to be able to introduce new initiatives without too much work to build new content types or new displays. We're going to work on the issue workflow with Git. As I'm sure you're aware, but the patch-based workflow is a, uh, a relic of the CVS era, and we're still on it, even though we have Git in the background. And a lot of people have asked for, well, how about pull requests or how about something of that nature? And we're working on it. We've got a, we've got a plan for that. And so we're going to change the way that code gets added and worked on on Drupal.org. We're going to make search usable. Um, I don't know. Did, does anybody use the search on Drupal.org, or do you go to Google and type site Drupal.org? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, yes. And so we're going to make it much more usable. We're going to make it so it's valuable. And along with the search, kind of tied to that, is finding modules. Because when you look at the number six, the improved tools to find and select projects, when you look at a module, there's some signals that we, that, you know, the longer you've been around the Drupal ecosystem, the more you know, oh, well, I'm going to look at how many times it's been installed, or, oh, I'm going to look at who the maintainer is, or I'm going to look at, you know, whatever. There's a whole bunch of signals that, you kind of learn over time to figure out how to evaluate modules. And when we think about us hosting all of the Drupal modules in one place, we're really like an app store for, Drupal, for the Drupal ecosystem. And so we need to get a better process in place for getting new modules into the ecosystem as well as being able to quickly and easily evaluate the quality and usability of those modules so that people can find what they're looking for to extend their sites. And finally, we're going to update Drupal Groups. It's still running on Drupal 6, and we're going to, um, yeah, pull in some of its functionality, uh, make it Drupal 7, and kind of give it a little bit of a refresh. So those are the seven strategic initiatives on the Drupal org roadmap. Um, that's hopefully what you can look forward to in 2015. We're working on it. Pretty quick. So some little bit more details on the account creation login. So why do we focus on this? Well, the workflow is hard for newcomers. Uh, we need to engage our users and encourage them to contribute. Spammers really love how easy it is to get started with Drupal.org. We get 10,000 accounts a month that are just sleeper accounts that spammers are automatically generating, and they're hard to stop because they're just account creation. And yeah. Um, and the roles and permissions in this in Drupal.org, we want to change to reflect people's position in the community. So we're we're adding a new role progression that allows people to become confirmed and community members that allow them to trust other users. We're basically making a web of trust out of out of the roles and permissions. Plus, this account creation is you know kind of the key to security for Drupal.org, which. Back in March, we had a, a breach, I'm sure you're aware of, and, or March 2013, a long time ago. So we've been focused on sealing up all the possibilities of making sure that that doesn't happen. Oh, what? OK, so we've simplified the registration process. We've added a lot more spam prevention systems in place to prevent account creation, prevent people from marketing their SEO on Drupal, which has pretty high uh, page rank, so we're a pretty big target. Um, we're tracking engagement, so we're trying to figure out who's using the site, how are they using the site, and how much of the site do they use, and using that as a metric to kind of decide, we're doing these things to improve engagement. Did it work? So this is one of the things we have added. Um, our new user role progression, so this is what I was mentioning before. People. When they first create an account, they're just authenticated. But some I don't know if anyone's created an account in a long time, but I've seen that um, not a spammer role that people were asking for. Um, we have a honeypot module that was often trapping people, stopping them from pr promoting their, their first question, saying, oh, sorry. And it kind of makes people feel not welcomed if they're 
just trying to ask a question and they get shut down. So we want to make sure new users are welcome. So we have this confirmed option that we're going to be rolling out to the community to be able to confirm other users. So there's, you know, anybody in ICE, in IRC that's been around the community a long time could just automatically confirm a new user if they have a problem. So it kind of spreads the load out. Um, and then, of course, we kind of reworded everything that was worded by volunteers at one point by some really savvy and sharp wordsmiths. So um, th these are just some of the uh, ideas that were pitched for possible um, user profile improvements of how, like, people can actually see what you've done and how you've contributed and who you work for and organization pages. Um, didn't know that animation was there. So for the improved profiles, these are the things we heard in user research of like why people wanted their profiles improved. So when you look at someone's page, you want to know who they are in the community. If someone says, hey, you should do X and Y and Z, it's nice to be able to go to their page and say, oh, this guy's credible. He really knows what he's talking about. He's been around for 13 years working on this. Um, which is what leads into knowing whether they have expertise in the area you're asking about or if they know what they're doing. Uh, it also helps to know how long they've been a member. Plus, it makes it easier to find other members of the community. If, like, you go to someone's page and they list four other people as mentors, you're like, well, who are these people? And then maybe you'll see them at a con and be like, oh, I've seen your page before. And you kind of know a little bit more about them. And finally, uh, just having a page, it's kind of like a resume, you know, to allow people to come and look at your Drupal.org page and say, yeah, here's my profile. Here's what I'm doing with Drupal.org. Uh, I can help your company. I can help your clients. This is what I know. So you can trust their answers and code. So some of the improvements that we've already got. Um, organization pages, we've focused on organization pages. This isn't how they look now. Uh, I need to update this slide. And that was another profile thing. So organizations, they're the key to our growth. So both providers and customer organizations. So we've got some media companies that build a lot of Drupal sites. And we've also got major clients that uh, have a Drupal site on staff, like government agencies and other large organizations. So we're looking for both Drupal shops as well as um, customer organizations. We want to highlight their contributions. We want to turn their contributions into successful case studies to demonstrate to everybody else what you can do with Drupal. Um, as they help support modules and themes, we want the rest of the world to know. And we want to incentivize organizations to help do that, to help tend the comments, because we've got this great product that's been built out of community effort after you know, 13, 14, 15 years. And it's reaching the point that it's so huge that we need all, all the time that companies can give us to keep it running and keep it going and keep it having momentum. So we want to incentivize those companies to participate. We want to incentivize companies to send people to DrupalCons. We want to incentivize companies to do things. And this is one of the ways that we're going to do it is with organization pages. Um, so our content strategy and redesign, uh, being responsive is more than just the theme. We want the content that people are looking for in the places where they would look for it. So we have new content types. Um, we have a, we're coming up with a better content governance model. So there's a lot of content on Drupal.org that there's documentation pages that are out of date. There's, there's information that's inaccurate sometimes because we don't really have a gatekeeper of who can post what. It's pretty, pretty Wikipedia free form anybody can add. Um, and then additionally, we're going to add a design system to that so that we can leverage, um, leverage those design pieces. Ah, the, the uh, Git workflow. So how many of you are submitting patches to issue queues? C1, anybody else? Work with the issue queues very much? OK. Um, this is uh, the initiative that I'm going to be help driving. So uh, it's the way that the code is written and the way that code is built on Drupal.org is, like I said before, it's a uh, kind of an antiquated patch workflow. 
And so we want to move more towards something similar to what GitHub has with pull requests, such that we can use the leverage the power of Git to be able to um, move change forward on Drupal.org. So we've got our canonical project rep repository. And every time an issue gets created, we'll start a, an issue workspace repository. So this is, instead of like, here's my patch, there will be a whole, it, it'll almost be like a fork for that entire issue. That'll be integrated with the test bots, as it is now. And there'll still be the issue queue conversation that goes on. So additionally, contributors will have their own repos, which are versions of that issue workspace. And we're going to add inline editing to um, the, pa the workflow which will allow users to, I mean, oftentimes a patch gets submitted and everything's fine, but you need to change some spacing and you need to, you know, uh, change some vocabulary. It'll be a lot easier if people can just change that in line rather than clone the whole repo, make another patch and submit it. Sure. Well, um, sort of the... I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, it's it's actually a function of Git that um, it's called uh, issue namespaces, or it's it's called Git namespaces. It allows you to have a a whole other set of branches and tags internally to Git that is not part of the um, like if you just clone the base repository, you won't see those. But if you clone the namespace for that issue, you will see those. And so it allows kind of another workspace where people can work and not interfere with like wherever the core main line is happening. So it's, it's similar to a pull request, but the, the workspace is created on Drupal.org and then you'll clone that. And so instead of forking the module locally, you'll do it on Drupal.org, kind of like you do with GitHub where you fork and it creates it, it'll do the same thing. So one of the things that we heard and why are we doing this instead of um, moving over to GitHub or something similar, well, the core contributors didn't feel like the pull requests implemented on GitHub would work for the current workflow. So Core definitely has a much more collaborative community-based workflow that doesn't, would not translate to GitHub. But they also know that the workflow that they're used to doesn't help new users. New users come in and there's a 14-step process to make a patch. And then another 16-step process to change that patch and add an interdiff. So you have to learn about 30 things to be able to even contribute, which we want to we want to change that. It works now. People have built Drupal on it, but we want to make it better. So our options were keep everything the same, which no one's really happy with, or we could move to GitHub, or we could switch to a new internal software tool like GitLab or Fabricator or something like that and host it internally, or we can modernize our current Drupal.org workflow. So pull requests not something new. People have been asking for it for years. This is one of those things that comes up again and again. So when you look at the slides online uh, after I post them, th this gives a lot of links to all the different places where people have talked about this and options and reasons why. But the main thing that we kept coming back to of why not to move to GitHub is that the pull requests versus issues is there's a fundamental difference in the data model between pull requests and issues. With the pull request, you have a code delta. This is what code we're going to change. And then you can discuss that one change. If that change isn't adequate or needs to change or, or needs to be modified, then you have to fork the pull request. And then another conversation starts up in another place. And if that's not quite right, then you, you have another pull request. And so the conversation gets forked along with the thing that you're trying to accomplish. And so on Drupal.org, we don't want that. We want to keep it to where all the conversation happens in the same place, and we can keep multiple code deltas associated with one issue workspace. So um, none of those options that we were talking about as uh, you know, moving to Git, none were easy. Like, we can't just move to GitHub. There's a crazy amount of other interdependencies on the inside as far as, like, updates go and other uh, the packaging scripts and downloading new modules. And just moving everything to GitHub would be a lot, lot, lot of work. Um, plus, it would require people to learn some new tools if they aren't using GitHub, even though a lot of people are. But then... Some people might say we're on an island because we're not on GitHub, but 
this is such a hard problem that WordPress hasn't, you know, they, they're still on subversion. They don't, they, they don't want to rock their boat either as, so it's just migrating is a huge problem. So, oh, go ahead. Um, I'm sure you've considered it, but um, was there another way of using the GitHub API to get what you needed? In other words, behind the scenes and forth and forth, but using the API you could fix that? Would that, as, as an alternative to making a whole system? Well, yeah, we, we had considered that, but uh, it, again, then adds another external dependency to the whole system that we're, now we have to rely on GitHub always being there and always working in order for us to, our stuff to work. And additionally, the integrating with their API part, it's just as much, I mean, it really only saves us the, we still have to have all of the interface on our side that does all the same functionality, but then just makes the calls to their API instead of to our, our functions. So, it, it ended up being kind of a wash. We did we did look at that, and so the way that we can do this on Drupal.org is with issue workspaces. So this is a modernized version of the current workflow, which maintains a collaborative data model that we currently want to maintain. So it's not a new idea. In fact, when they were talking about the great Git migration from CVS years ago, this was always part of the plan. They were saying we want to have per issue repository. We want to have a way to work on code on an issue by issue basis. So we're going to update the issue queues to support a pull request like workflow, as well as adding inline editing, which, as I said before, will be a, a huge boon to people that need to make just small changes to things. As, a, as an additional bonus, we can keep the patch-based workflow in place, because that's, that's what we really want to do is everybody's used to something. We don't want to just throw it out and say, here's your new tool, and everyone has to adapt immediately and be completely disrupted. We're going to change this such that you can still submit a patch, and in the background it'll create an issue, issue, work, an issue workspace with a commit on it, and other people can come and clone it and pull, and you can keep adding patches, and it'll still work. So that's that's kind of a win as far as like process workflow con continuity. We don't have to um, disrupt everybody. So this is an example of an actual issue that happened on Drupal core a number of years ago, and here's kind of how it would look like. So, it starts off, Dominer created an issue workspace, and, and this is kind of in the future, like he would create an issue workspace, clone it, and push that change to his branch on that issue workspace. So he's got a workspace called 1740492. And then XJAM sees his changes and says, oh hey, you know, we can clean this up. Um, this patch is good, but we just need some other, you know, change the wording here, add some spacing there. And so she would use the inline editor instead of submitting another patch like she did before. And then he pulls her changes and says, oh, okay, great, that works. I'll, I'll pull that, and I'm going to add some more commits and keep changing things because this doesn't quite work the way I want it to. And then this is where currently we have to do patch rerolls. So patch rerolls would go away because you could just merge back in from head so that you can be like, well, this thing I'm working on, it's out of date, let me catch it up. So he would work on that workspace. And then Damien comes along and says, oh, I want to work on this now. Uh, so I'm going to pull off the latest. And then he makes some more commits. And those numbers and parentheses are like the actual commit message numbers. Uh, Yes, the, um, the, the question was, what about unit testing for the uh, for those patches? As people add commits to their repos and then push them back up to the issue workspace, that'll trigger the new Drupal CI infrastructure to run tests against it, which is going to be a lot more robust and have a lot more options as far as, I want to change which database this runs on, I want to change which PHP options are set. Those, those are the kind of things we're looking to expand in the testing infrastructure so that you'll have the ability to kind of move... The, Test what you want to test and make sure it works the way you want them to. So in this example, uh, Dawner liked Damien's changes and pulled them back into his and moved forward. And then Dostro came along and was like, oh, I have some ideas on how this could work. So he pulls a patch, or he clones the latest issue workspace, adds another commit to it, 
Dollar comes back to the issue and says, you know, I don't think I want those changes, so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to look at which batch is the latest or, or what. I'll just keep working on my own branch in the issue queue. And so he added some more patches. And then Jay Hodgson comes along and says, oh, well, you know, this needs some documentation edits. So let me fix the documentation now that this patch comes in. So she can use the inline editor to make the change to the documentation. And then Dawner pulls it back in, takes her suggestions, pulls them back into his his local branch of the workspace. And then when he's done with it, he can say, okay, I think this is RTBC. This is time to push this up to the community. Um, and then Alex Bot takes it and he can say, okay, let's merge all these, let's squash all these commits together to make one nice merge commit to say, here is this change that's going to affect Drupal Core. And he'll merge it and push it back into head. And so that's kind of how the new Git workflow will work. Um, there's, we've got a lot, a lot to do on that. That's, um, Probably Barcelona is where we're aiming to have that like implemented. Um, so, then any questions about the Git workflow? Um, I'm not seeing any hands. Great. So we want to make another initiative is we want to make search usable. So our search, yeah, like we said, pretty much everybody uses Drupal. Uses Google to search Drupal to find what they need on Drupal, and so. People want to find what they want to find. They want to figure out whether a module is worth using. They want to know what modules are available. They want to be able to find documentation. They want to be able to find a solution to their problems. So it's not rocket surgery. We can fix this pretty easily. We're going to improve the way we have solar set up. We're going to improve the way the display modes work. So when search results come back from solar, it has the relevant information you're looking for in a condensed package. We're going to have better facets, and this comes back to the content strategy of like, when you get a module back, what are the pieces of information you might be looking for for that module? Um, I mean, maybe you just want to filter by D8 modules, and that's, you know, those, those sorts of things should be available in search. And then we also want to make organizations and users show up in search. So if someone searches for views, we should also respond with Merlin of Chaos as his profile, because he built views, for example, or anyone that's been maintaining it. By the way. And in addition with search, we also want to improve how people find and select projects. So like I was mentioning before, this is how you can find out the quality of a project. How, and th this is a, a problem that's kind of universal to the web. Like, I have a lot of products. Which one's the best one to choose? I have a lot of restaurants to go to. Which one's the best one to choose? There's a lot of apps in the app store. Which one's the best one to choose? So there's a lot of design patterns out there that we can follow and emulate. And some of those are, um, you know, let's see, ratings and reviews, um, health metrics, things like, oh, there hasn't been any commit on this module for, you know, two years yet there's been 20 new issues that no one's responded to. Those sorts of metrics that let us know that like, well this module looks like it's not very maintained, so use it at your own risk. And we'll, we'll be surfacing that information in a much easier way as opposed to just kind of happen to know what to check for. Uh, we'll be able to have project comparisons, so make it easier to say, well which Twitter block module do I want? You know, which one is going to integrate with the API? or which one is going to be just their JavaScript version. Um, we also want to be able to reference case studies on project pages. So every time some module is used to do something really impressive, we want to be able to say, oh, and this this site used it. So whenever there's a case study that says these are the modules we used to build, we want to give credit to the module maintainers that, hey, you, you helped make NBC.com possible. You helped make Tesla possible. So better tagging and classifications of projects. That's, again, back to our content strategy and our taxonomy um, of how people find projects and modules on Drupal.org. And finally, uh, Drupal groups. So there's some things we heard in user research. They want to find out when Drupal events are happening and connecting with other members of the community and connecting with local user groups. And they want to find news and updates from the local groups. And they want to know where is the next uh, Drupal user meetup. So groups is where a lot of the community happens, and we want to keep that momentum rolling. We want to keep, uh, 
Groups is kind of like our meetup.org, but for Drupal. So we we want to enhance what's there, upgrade it to Drupal 7 so we have a lot less maintenance burden, and keep its value and, and expand its value for us. So um, what's next? The Drupal.org roadmap, we're keeping updates there. We're tagging issues in the issue queues with specific tags for what we're working on. We're always welcome to volunteer assistance if people have ideas on how these things could work. Um, there's pretty much all of these have a community-based input phase where we're like, okay, this is what we think we want to do, and we put it out to the community, and the community can come back and be like, well, did you think of this, or did you think of that? And it's awesome because we have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who know what they're doing in our community, and so it's, it's great to be able to have that sort of feedback, so we appreciate anything that you would want to contribute. Um, anyhow, is there any, any questions about Drupal.org and our infrastructure? Sure. Um, you mentioned that you're using a Scrum uh, methodology. Um, what is the uh, decision-making process exactly? For example, uh, the changes where the organization has a profile and they get credit for what they do, um, the algorithm that's used in edge cases where is it the credit for the individual who did it or for the organization or both? Uh, who makes those decisions? Um, those don't necessarily come up in our scrums. Our, our scrums are really just a daily check-in to say who's working on what. So, but that the decision-making process on those sort of things, we have uh, tech team meetings uh, once a week where we'll have something like that where people are stuck on, uh, well, this this has an impact on how the actual functionality works. And so we've got some people who are product owners and managers, like uh, Tatiana is the product owner of Drupal.org. So she kind of has the final decision authority based off of her knowledge of the community and how things should work. Of If it comes down to who should get credit on this, a user and organization, like I, I think there are just some judgment calls internally that, that people make on those sorts of things. Okay. But at the same time, we definitely put that out to the community. Any Any time that has a judgment call, we're like, Okay, here's what we think it should do. Does everyone agree? And there's usually an opportunity for the community to get involved and say, well, actually I don't because if this edge case affects me. And so that's that's usually how the process works. Where is the space for the community input? Uh, it's in the Drupal.org issue queues. Um, yeah, so we've got... Yeah, we, we maintain that as our, our place where, as we're working on stuff, we put it back in. So, because we don't want to just develop things in a vacuum, because we know that the community has built what's there now, and it's great, and we're just going to drive it forward from there, and, you know, we definitely don't want to build something the community doesn't want. So, we always want community feedback. Anybody else have any other questions about the future of Drupal.org? I see no hands, so thanks.